how that works. So scaling, prerequisites, how it works. I saw some question, I saw a question about doing food studies and being concerned that it will bring down your ATAR and so on and so forth. What I recommend first of all is that you pursue what you are interested in and passionate about. That is the first thing that I recommend. But beyond that, depending on the goals you have, it makes sense for us to think about scaling. Um, and the sort of effect that might have. So we'll be talking about now all things ATA, aggregate, study score, subject scaling, and thinking about uni. Now this is big, it's jam-packed. Rem a reminder that you can download these slides and access them. Um, and I would encourage you to do so because I don't have time to explain everything in detail, but you've got it all there. So first of all, just know there are no cheat codes. VCE requires effort. Effort gives you results. All right. So as, as we discussed this, just bear that in mind. There is no cheat code, code, no miraculous thing you can be doing. All right. So let's talk about ATAR. ATARs are our, 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 the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank. Reminder that it is a ranking, not a score. So when I get at, when my ATAR 97.9, that meant that I'm in the top 2.1 percent of the state or of of the country if it's an ATAR I guess. So it compares you to the rest of the students in year 12 in Australia. So if you get an ATAR of 95 it means you beat 95 percent of other students. If you get an ATAR of 10 it means you beat 10 percent of other students but congratulations it's still you know an ATAR is an ATAR. <laughs> now, our ATAR is calculated from our aggregate. The aggregate is a score, which is the sum. So biology plus psychology plus English plus math, maths methods, so on and so forth. It's the sum of the scaled study scores for your top English, your next three highest scores, and 10% of your fifth and sixth subjects. For me, my it was um, my English, so 44, plus my uh, literature, psychology, and biology, plus 10% of my methods and my chemistry it's total study score. I'll show you what that what it looks like. If you got the following scaled results. Legal Studies 41, English 40, Methods 37, Chem 36, Bio, so on and so forth. It would be your total study, it would be your state scaled study score of your English, your top English, your top three subjects, so legal, methods, and chemistry, and 10% of bio and 10% of physics, which would give you your aggregate which is then compared to everybody else's to calculate the ATAR. And this is all about um, mean, median, mode, so on and so forth, trying to work out essentially the bell curve. In 2016, this is what it looked like. Um, I can find, I might be able to find my thing to find my aggregate. Okay, so it's comparative, it's ranked, and that's how they work it out. So these study scores are the study scores themselves, so the mark you get for the subject, they are a score from 1 to 50 for a particular subject. And again, in essence, they are a rank. When I found out that I got 46 for, for biology, and I was like, oh, my God, I got 46, freaking out. I, my mom, 
was like, oh, great job, not realizing that 46 is not 46 out of 100, but it's 46 out of 50. And there's, um, <laughs> it, it's not a, a percentage, but it's a score. So the average raw score for every subject is 30. So if you get a 30, it means you scored higher than 50% of the state. 50% of the state scored higher than you. And this is what it looks like. So for me, if I got a 46 and a 48, it meant that I was in the top 2 or 1.8 or 1 1.5 or 1% of the state for that subject. So the average is 30 and the average ATAR is normally around 70% as or 70, ATAR, an ATAR of 70 as well. Okay. So it uses maths, standard deviations to work out what a study score, what study score you get. Okay. So study scores are calculated by um, the marks you get for your Saxon exams and the three graded assessments. So typically the three graded assessments are semester one or, or unit one or sorry, unit three, normally semester two. So unit four and your exam, which is GA3, typically for a typical subject. So you get a letter grade um, for each of the graded assessments. And your study score is derived from how well you did in those graded assessments and how much those graded assessments were weighted. So I want to show you English um, So in 2021, we can if you look up um, standard deviation and your and the subject this is what 2021 um these tell us show us all of the stats so in 2021 there were three graded assessments graded assessment one pretty much semester one unit three unit four and unit uh, and our written examination so each graded assessment i think it's 25 25 and then 50 percent for our exam. That's what each one is worth towards our final and ultimate grade. So we can see here um, in for graded assessment one, so for unit one, um, the total percentage of people that got an A plus was 13.6% and the average was a B of 17.9% uh, of people and students got that mark. Now we can see to get an A plus for unit three, you had to get 84 to 100 out of 100 as your mark, okay? Then we come here for the exam, and it, it's a little bit different here for English for the exam. But if we look at this, 7.5% um, of people got an A plus on the exam. The range of an A plus is 47 to 60. Now for English, you, before the exam, you do three essays, three essays, three essays. Each of those essays are marked twice. Each of those essays are worth 10%. So that's where that mark of 60 or 60 marks possible comes from. Um, so to get an A plus on the exam, it means you had to get anywhere from eight to 10 out of 10 for each essay, and that would give you an A+. So study score is worked out by doing the maths, by using the, um, the grade distribution. Um, they do averages. They weight them differently, but that's where it's derived from. I don't know exactly how they take it, but that's where they derive it from. There is a mathematical process, and that is probably the best explanation and understanding you can sort of gain as to what that process is. Now, in terms of subject scaling, um, 
they are scaled. Your study scores are scaled depending on the level of of comp of how competitive the subject was to make it as fair as possible by making every subject even. For instance, it wouldn't be fair if, um, and this is where it comes from. It reflects how competitive it is, not how difficult. So how competitive a subject is gets measured by how well students perform in their other subjects. For instance, um, if everyone were to do to to do um, yeah, let's talk about it. Specialist maths versus VC versus PE. It's much more competitive in spec than, for instance, PE. So, specialist maths gets scaled up because it tends to be more difficult and more competitive to get a forty compared in specialist versus a 40 in PE. So that's how the scaling works. It's to equalize subjects. Um, it's not a reward or punishment um, for doing a subject. It's just to make it as even as possible. The whole point of scaling is that there is no reward and no punishment for taking a subject. Scaling adjusts for competitiveness to ensure that there's a level playing field. So you don't get punished for choosing specialists and doing and not getting 80 in it compared to if you were to do not getting 80. So it's designed so if you do a subject that is more that is trickier, that it is harder. To get 100 in, it, you don't miss out because of that fact. What this might mean, though, and what you might have to consider, for instance, that person who's doing um, food tech or, or food studies and um, is concerned about scaling, you, you need to consider that for a subject like food studies that does get scaled down a lot, you can still do it and do really well. You just have to make sure you do really well in it for the scaling not to affect it. Largely, a 50 is a 50. If you get a 50, that is very rarely scaled down. But it's, it just means that there is probably more people getting a 40 for food studies than there are getting a 40 for, um, for specialist. So it's about balancing it out and you've got to remember it's all about uh, the grade distribution, about standard deviation, okay? That being said, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but perhaps we'll summarize this. So to recap all of that maxi stuff, your raw study scores are scaled based on the competitive competitiveness of the subject. Your aggregate, so that, that random number is calculated using your top four subjects, your, well, your top three subjects and your top English and 10% of your fifth and your sixth subjects. Your ATAR is calculated off, sorry, your ATAR is calculated off your aggregate. Okay, that's where all the maths comes from. This is why I say there is so much uncertainty for VCE because even if we understand the process and where the numbers come from, it is still difficult, difficult to know because it is a matter of, of rank and it is a matter of sort of comparison in a sense. So it's really hard to know. It's really hard to offer advice on marks. It's really difficult to offer advice on um, ATARs and so on and so forth because it truly is just impossible to know. There are no guarantees when it comes to your ATAR. There are no guarantees and that's why it's so important for you to um, to just try, I think, to really try, not let the marks bog you down, 
not be concerned by the marks because ultimately there's no guarantees in that sense, you know? All right. So, should you pick subjects because they scale up? No. Should you pick subjects because they scale down? No. You should just pick subjects that you are interested in. You can see how this works. Okay. For instance, the only two subjects that have scaled up were physics and methods. One of them has ended up as a 10% increment. This ATAR that you would get from this would be incredible. Look at all of those 40s. I think this was from my colleague and they got like 99 point something. They do medicine now. I got... I got 48 for psych, 48, 46 for, um, for bio, 44 for English. I did literature, 37, and then my 10% was methods and chem. I think I got a 30 and a 35 for the two of those. They were my 10%, and I got a 97.9, right? Now. SAC, oh yeah, 98.65. This is my colleague here. So SAC moderation is the thing that's a little bit more complicated and SAC moderation helps to balance out um, between schools, okay? Um, for instance, if... SAC moderation is the way that they control for the fact that some schools mark harder, some schools give harder assessments, some schools give easier assessments and mark more um, loosely. So SAC moderation is the way they balance that out and that's why we do the GATT. Your SAC marks get moderated or changed and modified depending on how well your school does on the exam. Okay. This is why this example here is is why SAC moderation and why the GAT and why trying your best at the GAT is so important because it reflects on your own marks, reflects on the quality of your school, not the quality of your school, but the quality of um, their their marking in the school in terms of if it's hard, harsh, easy, looser. Okay, so SAC moderation um, helps to balance that, and this is how. We can sort of visualize that. School A's average SAC mark was 90, but their average exam mark was 50. So their SACs will go down. For instance, if every if the average SAC mark was 90, but they only got a 50 on the exam, and this is the general assessment that most people did, it, it balances it out, okay? It's about making VCE fairer. So rankings are how your scores get moderated and your ranking is where you are ranked in the year level compared to everyone else at the school based on your SAC scores. So if you have the second best average SAC, that your ranking will be number two. If you have the best average SAC score, your ranking will be number one. I had a student yesterday ask me if um, their ranking, if they got the highest SAC score and rent, went in at number one, if they would be guaranteed to get the number one, um, the number one mark on the exam. In my case, I went in, so I duxed um, psych and bio. I went in at rank one for all of those subjects. Sorry, I went in rank one for bio to the exam and came out rank one. But for psychology, I actually went into the psychology exam as rank two. And what I, I must have done better on the exam than the rank one. And I got the highest mark at the end. And I got the top study score and ducks that year. I got a 48 and my, and, um, my peer in my class 
who went in at rank one, they got a raw 46 on psych. On psych. So ranking is actually a good, pretty good indication of where you sort of are and what you can expect. Um, and ranking is important. Again, it is all about rank. So ranking can actually indicate um, roughly what you can expect to get. Your SAC scores are moderated, so the person with the best SAC ranking gets the best best SAC scores, and so on. Okay, even though Bob got seventy on the exam, but they had ninety all throughout, their SAC score would get moderated, um, moderated depending on the how the rest of the cohort went. If we can see here. I, Bill, Jack, and Jill all did better on the exam than in their SACs. Even though, so their SAC scores get get moderated up in some cases. But even though Bob did worse on the exam, but everyone else and the majority of students did better on the exam. So which means that Bob's SACs score gets moderated up. But your exam score still counts as your exam score and still counts towards your study score. So you need to do as well as you can on the exam and in every SAC and throughout the year because for the exam, most of the time, it's worth between 50 and 60% of the final grade. So you really want to be doing as well as you can on every SAC so you can get a good ranking, okay? And this goes without saying, but help your neighbor, help your classmates. They are there to help you, to support you, and you should be doing the same with them. All right, I'm going to just take one, two minutes because I'm feeling a bit of a sore throat. So I'll just put a timer on for a moment. All right, there is two minutes. Awesome. So you can use an ATAR calculator to indicate to you what sort of scores you need to get a particular ATAR, and they do those calculations using the aggregate. So that's a good sort of way to work things out. And I tend to find that they're pretty realistic. We can put my scores into a calculator and see that. Um, All right, let's do 
Well, I, I did 2020, so 2018, so let's do that. Biology, um, rule 36. We can see how it changes. So it started at less than 30 and now it's at 43.25. You can see only my um, bio is scaled up. So bio is a more competitive subject than psych, according to scaling. Um, I did English and got a 44. I did literature and I think I got a 37. I always forget lit, so I put in 37. So that takes me to 96.15. I also did methods and I got a 30. And I also did chemistry and I think I got a 35. Yep, 97.9. So we can see how accurate they were. And if we compare that in 2019, that would have been a 98.1. In 2020, 98.1. In 2021, the same. Okay. So 2018 must have been a very clever year. <laughs> well, we can see that. That's really interesting. Um, to see how scaling changed. Oh, here we go. So lit in, when I did it, it scaled up by one. But in 2020 it and 2021, it scaled up by two. Chem stayed the same. It scaled up by one. I was scaled up by five and scaled up by four for all other years. So it's really interesting to see, even though my aggregate remained the same, that there was 0 0.2 between. If only I had done it in one of these years. Very interesting. And the ATA notes calculator as well shows you as well all of the courses that I would have been eligible for. And I ended up doing Bachelor of Arts, which I love. All right, let's go back to the slides. I don't have too many more. To